Hey, what's happening? This is uh, Pastor Derwin Gray, uh, founding and lead pastor of Transformation Church in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We are a five-year-old church plant with four campuses in the South Carolina area. Actually, two of our campuses are also in prisons, and so God has been very, very gracious to us. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is the DNA of a multi-ethnic church plant the DNA of a multi-ethnic church plant. Now, let me start off by saying this. The New Testament knows nothing of a homogeneous New Testament local church. The word ecclesia called out ones. The church through the first century knows nothing of a Jewish church or a Gentile church, but churches were Jews and Gentiles, the new people of God. And so what I'm talking about isn't anything that's new, but it's always been true and thoroughly biblical. So individual salvation only exists so that God could have a multi-ethnic family that would be his hands and feet, his transformative agent, his missionary people on planet Earth. That is the only reason individual salvation exists. So what exactly is the DNA of a multi-ethnic church plant, multi-ethnic church planter? The first thing is we have to have a theological vision. So let's start with theology. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses like 9 and 10, Paul talks about the eternal purpose of God. So eternal means eternal, that God has an eternal purpose. And according to Paul in verses 9, that eternal purpose was the manifold wisdom of, of God, which was the mystery of Christ, which is Jews and Gentiles, partakers of the same body. This was a very provocative statement that Paul made. It was very anti culture that he was in because the Jews and Gentiles were divided. And Paul was saying that through Jesus, a new race, a third race, a new humanity called the church, which was the manifold wisdom of God, God's eternal purpose was these multi-ethnic congregations of Jews and Gentiles who are now the new people of God through the work of Christ. So in eternity past, God has always desired a multi-ethnic church. In eternity future, which we see in Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 through 12, we see every nation, tribe, and tongue worshiping Jesus. So eternity past, multi-ethnic church. Eternity future, multi-ethnic church. So when we come into time and space, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, God makes a covenant with Abram, who becomes Abraham, and says, through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. The nation of Israel raises up to be a light to the Gentiles. Jesus comes through the nation of Israel. His life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, the sending of the Spirit births this new multi-ethnic race. And, and we see this in the book of Ephesians. The grace that saves us by faith in Christ vertically becomes the grace that brings us together on earth horizontally. And we see this in Ephesians 2, 14 through 16, where Jesus is our peace. He broke down a dividing wall through his body. And then it says that in him, a new humanity was created. Jews and Gentiles become one body. Hostility was killed because of the cross. So we have vertical reconciliation and we have horizontal reconciliation. The grace that comes from heaven is the grace that builds a heavenly community on earth. So a local multi-ethnic church is a sign and foretaste of that great eternal church. And so that's just a sneak peek into the theology the theological vision of why multi-ethnic church is God's heart. Okay, and then some of the nuts and bolts is you got to have diverse leadership. That is so key. We see that in Acts chapter 6 and in Acts chapter 13. You see the diversity in leadership. Why is that important? Because diversity in leadership signifies to the people, to the congregation, what you are really serious about. Not only do you need diverse leadership, but then you need diverse musical genres, okay? And so this is, this is going to be tricky. So it's important that you find humble musicians for the weekend corporate gathering who can be 
cross genre in their musical expressions, okay? That is so important. And what we found at Transformation Church is that when we've done that, it's taught our church how to become servants. The particular style may not be their favorite, but the exalting of Christ is God's honoring. And then we serve each other, and we begin to pay it forward. It becomes this, this cycle of servanthood. And so that's really important. And then also, you need cross-cultural competency, Cross-cultural competency. What does that mean? It means you understand people who are different than you. So what does that mean? That means God gave you two ears, two eyes, and one mouth for a reason. To listen to people, to look at people who are different than you are, to hear their narratives, to walk in their shoes, to learn from them, to learn their history. That is so, so important. And never forget, do not attempt to plant a multi-ethnic church if you do not live a multi-ethnic life. That is so important. Authenticity rings out of relationship and proximity. That is super, super important. So not only do you need a diverse leadership team, not only do you need diverse musical genres, uh, but you also need the cross-cultural competency. And then you need a powerful prayer life. Uh, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 is the prayer that the Apostle Paul finishes Ephesians chapter 1, 2, and 3, verses 1 through 13. And then 14 through 21 is this prayer to make this multi-ethnic church become a reality. So please understand this. Paul is writing to the people of Ephesus, these local house churches, where there was disagreement where, where there was cultural baggage. And he says, the cross obliterates that. So walk in the hostility that has been destroyed through the work of Christ. Okay? And, and so that is super, super important. Our prayer life is exceedingly important. And Paul says, listen, I pray that you're strengthened in your inner being as Christ makes his home in your heart through faith. That you'd be rooted and grounded in God's love. And know with all of God's people how wide, how long, how deep, how high the love of Christ is, that you may be filled to the fullness of God. And then he says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly above and beyond all that we ever hope, think, or imagine, as God works mightily within us, all glory to the church in Christ Jesus for all generations. Amen and amen and amen. So listen, on a very practical level, the hope and healing for the divisiveness in the United States of America is multi-ethnic churches that are centered in the gospel, who understand justice and reconciliation because that flows from the power of the gospel in our relationships. And then finally, develop thick skin because you're going to be mocked, you're going to be made fun of. Develop a soft heart because there's nothing like a loving heart. And then develop humble hands that go and serve. So here's some, just some suggestions. And uh, if you want to learn more, you can check out my book, The High Definition Leader, Building Multi-Ethnic Churches in a Multi-Ethnic World. Thank you for your time, and may God grant you just amazing grace to build his church for his glory, your joy for the sake of the world. This is Pastor Derwin Gray of Transformation Church. Peace. I'm out.